بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ناؤ وی اسٹارٹ دا کوشچن 2 اف جون 22 پیپر 52 ناؤ کمنگ ٹو کوشچن نمبر 2 دا یورپین بیجر میلس میلس پکچرڈ ان فگر 2.1 از اے مامل فاؤنڈ ان انگلینڈ بیجرز کین کنٹریکٹ بوواین ٹوبرکلوسس کاز بائی دا پیتھوجن مائکوبیکٹیریا بوبس ناؤ وی اسٹڈی دیٹ ان دا اے ایس لیول ریسرچرز ایسٹیمیٹڈ دیٹ 5% اف دا بیجر پاپولیشن ان انگلینڈ ار انفیکٹڈ وتھ bovine tuberculosis or BVTB. BTB can be spread between badger populations and other populations of wild animals and farmed animals. Herds of dairy cows produce milk for human consumption. If a dairy herd becomes infected with the bovine tuberculosis, the pathogen can be transmitted to human populations in milk. A variety of measures have been introduced in an attempt to reduce the BTB rate in badgers and so prevent infection of dairy cows. These measures include vaccination and the removal of badger population which is called culling and this is the cute little animal we are talking about and that's a badger. So just how researchers estimated the percentage of the badger population that was infected with BTB. So this is three marks. How do you do that? Capture a large sample from one area or more than one area. and then record the number caught and then count the number infected then the population of uh, the number of the population of uh, infected divided by the total number into 100 or you could have said the mark release recapture method and the lincoln index so this would have helped you to find out so you capture a large sample then you count them how many they are are they 1000 1200 1500 then you test and count the number which are infected with the btb so the population of infected divided by the population or the total number in 200 that would be the formula that we would use and or you could have said mark release recapture method So capture a very large sample so you just don't catch 5 or 6 or 10 you catch a large number so capture a large sample count the number caught then test and count the number infected then you use the formula number infected over the total number into 100 because we have to find the percentage that was infected with btb and this is also called the mark release recapture method and the lincoln index Part B of the question it is possible that wild badgers infect dairy cows with BTB a group of scientists investigated the correlation between BTB infections in badgers and BTB infection in dairy cows 30 study areas in England were identified 30 study areas each of the area was approximately 100 km square 10 of the 3 study 30 study areas were randomly selected given the codes A to G J The number of infected cows and the number of infected badgers were counted in each area. The number of infected badgers was determined by testing for the presence of Mycobacterium bovis in tissue samples taken from the badgers. The number of infected cow was determined by testing for a response inflammation to the introduction of antigenic material into the skin. Data was collected as shown in table 2.1. Data set 1 areas where counts were made A B C E F G H and year when counts were made 1999 and data set 2 was D I G and this was done in 2001 The scientists expressed their data on the numbers of infected cows and infected badgers as the population density of infected cows and infected badgers Explain what is meant by the term population density and suggest why the data was expressed in this way You see uh, numbers of infected badgers or the number of infected cows per unit area why because this would allow a valid comparison between the infected cows and the infected badgers so this would be a way of you know comparing in a proper manner so numbers of infected badgers or cows per unit area and this allows a valid comparison So uh, how do we write it numbers of infected cows or infected badgers per unit area which is allow a very valid comparison so it says what is meant by the term population density and suggest why the data was expressed in this way so that we can compare the data then it says state three variables that were not standardized in this investigation 
So then you have to go back to this investigation and see what was not standardized in this. So then you go through this again, read through these again, and then you realize, okay, well, this was really not really right because uh, there was no method of testing for BTB in badgers and uh, cows. How was it? There was the method of testing was was uh, not very specific. It wasn't the same. Then year of data collection was not the same. Then the type of cattle was not the same. Cattle kept, were they kept indoors or outdoors? We don't know that. Number of areas counted each year. And then the season, what time of the year did they do this data collection? Did they do it in the spring? Did they do it in the winter? Did they do it in the summers? So variables that were not standardized in this investigation, then you have to come up with from the information given to you in the question, you've got to figure out what was actually not very, uh, what, what were the flaws in it or what were the things that needed to be standardized. So method of testing for TB in badges and cows was not standardized. Uh, then year of the data collection were different, was not standardized. Then the breed of the cattle was not, we didn't know what was the breed of the cattle. Were the cattle kept indoors or outdoors? Number of areas counted each year was different. Seasons in which the data was collected was not specified or was it the same season or as a different season. So these were the things which were not standardized. Then coming to the C part of the question, the scientists decided to analyze their data on the occurrence of BTB in cows and badgers, statistically state a null hypothesis. A null hypothesis means to negate it. So there's no correlation between the number of infected badgers and the number of affected cases, affected cows. So no correlation, or you can say no correlation in the occurrence of infection between badgers and cows. So the answer is very simple. You say no correlation. You can say no correlation or you can say no relationship between the number of infected badgers and the number of infected cows. Then part two says the scientists plotted a scatter graph of the population density of infected badgers and infected cows as shown in figure 2.2. The scientists drew a line of best fit on the scatter graph. Now you can see here we have number of infected badges per kilometer square, 0 0.2, 0 0.4 like this, and number of infected cows per um, kilometer square. So we've got the infected badges and the infected cows per kilometer square. So you can see this, this is a very weird sort of a scatter graph. Now, where is J? This is A, B, C, and then you look at how they are all sort of spread very, uh, it's it's um, very randomly. There's no sort of, you can't see any any correlation. Now, let's look at the question. What are they saying? It says, the scientists carried out a statistical test on the two data sets combined and on each set separately. The results of these tests are data set 1 and 2, A, B, C, D, F, G, H, I, J, Correlation is positive. Significance at probability is equal to 0 0.05. Significant. Then data set 1, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, negative, not significant. 2, D, I, G, negative, not significant. So we've got all this data now. Let's look at what is the question. Some scientists suggested the information showed a strong positive relationship between the number of infected badgers in an area and the number of infected cows in the same area. These scientists also suggested that BTB in herds of cows that could be could be reduced by removing badgers through culling. Evaluate whether or not the data in figure 2.2 and table 2.2 support the suggestion these scientists made. And this is for three marks and that ends this uh, question. So when they say support, then you've got to give me in favor and again. So you can say support does not support and where the, where, it, where the graph says it does not support or where the table says it does not support because you've got to look at figure 2.2. This is figure 2.2 and then you look at table 2.2. Both of them should be correlated and you must look at them very carefully before you answer this question. Now you are supposed to look at this graph which has the number of infected badges per kilometer square and the number of infected cows. So, I mean, when you look at it, what is happening here, there's a combined data. If you look at A and J, this shows a positive correlation. You see the numbers of here infected badgers. So this is the number of infected cows. Now, as the number of 
infected badgers increases the number of infected cows also increases so a and j show a positive correlation also in the combined data if you look at table 2.2 the a and j is a positive correlation and it's significant so the combined data also shows a significant correlation or a significant uh, relationship so if we uh, kill the badgers that is culling if you cull the infected badgers this would lower the infection in the cattle so this was a question of supporting the for uh, supporting the data then when it does not support where does it not support let's look at the ones where it does not support so you can see d d and j they sort of out if they increase then indeed has become less while the number of infected badges has increased so you can see d and j and a and h they don't sort of match and there is no data between 0.4 and 0.6 we don't see any data here between 0.4 and 0.6 plus the data is taken from different years which was given here in the beginning of the question then other question why it's not uh, does not support from the table it's separated data a and h and d and j then uh, the correlation does not mean causation you see if correlation doesn't mean causation cause means cause of the uh, infected cows only data sets from 10 areas only 10 out of 30 were studies so 10 out of 30 areas were studied not all of them were not studied and the data is only from england is only from one country so we cannot say that it is going to be valid for all over the world this data was only from one country so this is how we will word this that a and j shows a positive correlation then a and j show a significant correlation we can get that from the table then so culling infected badgers lowers the infection in cattle then no data between 0.4 and 0.6 per kilometer square area then the correlation does not mean causation uh, only data set from 10 out of 30 study areas and only data is from england is only one country so you cannot say this is a universal thing that completes this paper and best of luck and i hope you can you are able to handle paper 5 if there are any any papers that you want me to do and i don't have them on my channel please do let me know and i'll definitely try and put them on uh, for you all to get your guidance from thank you very much